There we have seasons here on HQ. The seasons change. Tonight's the end of season two. Cause you've been playing HQ. And I've been posting for you. Cause you've been playing HQ. And I've been waiting for you to win HQ. Yes, it's true. Hello, HQ Unicorns, HQ Cumbers, HQ Unitarians, HQ Universal Life Church Ministers, HQ Bird H Humphreys, HQ Ba Gooding Juniors, HQ Bay Fiascos, my HQ Patooties. It is Sunday, March 3rd. 2019, a day that will live in quiz for me. Because as the day season two comes to a close, baby, you've been playing for the past six weeks, winning cash, earning points, leveling up, jacking up that season finale jackpot. It truly all boils down to this. I am the original quiz daddy, your host, Scott Rogowski, reporting live from a wet and wintry New York City with over a half a million, well over a half a million of you in the game tonight, including Krista and Joy and Michaela, Mario Handelman, Dave, Lucy and all the HQs at the Opium Show in Las Vegas, Amaya's dad, Ron, Dustin Sachs, and Sadie Friedman with season finale birthdays today. Let's see if you can fit 125,687 candles on your cake, because that's how much money you're playing for tonight. Yes, if you answer all 15 questions, you'll be winning. A share of that sweet, sweet cash. That's more than 21 Savages bail. You could have bailed them out. Those points, of course, translate into free passes. And those are going to come in handy tonight. It's not too late. Any points you earn will kick in automatically. And we're giving you one final boost with a 10 times point multiplier on tonight's questions. You answer question 10 times the points. Those free passes will kick in tonight for this game. Where are you at right now? Anybody get to level 10? I know at least one of you did. We did a little survey. If you got to level 10, that means you have to answer five questions to win the whole thing. If you have an extra life on top of that, you'll have to answer just four. Yeah, extra lives can be used with your passes only once per game, not in the final question. Get one now if you don't have. You're going to want every advantage for tonight's season finale showdown, okay? But heads up for you newbies, pro tip, you can earn extra lives for free playing five days in a row. Referring your friends to is the number one trending topic on Twitter right now. Holy for holies, you did that. Yeah, you, and you're the reason why you're playing for over 125K tonight. You showed up every day, night after night, quizzing with me to get some money. From everyone here at HQ, thank you for being the best live game show community in the world. I wish all of you HQs could win tonight, but in season two, we get down to the nitty gritty and get this show on the road. Cumero, a numero, oh no. According to an old saying, money can't buy what? Honey, happiness, or huge hula hoops. Even if you're new to Earth and have never heard the saying, you can still arrive at the answer by the process of elimination, as money is a leading method of buying honey and hula hoops, leaving happiness as the sole uncommoditizable option. Money can buy donuts, however, which provide happiness. 596,406. I'm so happy. Yeah, you're happy. You got that right. Hey, I mentioned it's not too late to level up. You're still earning points by answering questions. And if you can level up in this game, your free pass will be auto-applied. Like I said, we're giving you one last chance here to up those point totals by increasing those multipliers even more. It could be just what the doctor ordered tonight to push you over the edge into the winner's circle. That's all I'm saying. Q2. What is 12 a.m. also known as noon, midnight, or midday? I know this can be confusing, but you're an adult now, okay? It's high time you know the difference between 12 a.m. and p.m. Noon and midday, well, those are the same thing. Yeah, it's not the answer. 12 a.m. is the first moment of the early morning, a.k.a. midnight. The a.m., baby. That is your answer here. 574, 35 in the moonlight, in the midnight. You're riding that midnight train to Q3 tonight. Season finale, baby, of these Disney princesses. Which was a real historical figure? Aurora, Pocahontas, or Tiana? Disney has often looked to classic fairy tales as inspiration for their animated princesses, but sometimes they plunder IRL history, rewrite it, heavily glamorize it, and call it a wrap, as they did with Pocahontas. 
There she is. You know, Miss John Smith. Polka Hunters is your answer here. Not Elizabeth Warren. 586,175 of you have clearly heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon. You're quizzing with all the colors of the wind tonight. But let me tell you what's happening this week on HQ. We got a big week for you. Tomorrow night, we're taking our maiden voyage on the Titanic. What could possibly go wrong? Near, far, wherever you are, play Titanic Trivia with me. Same app time, same app place, 9 p.m. Movie, Monday, baby. Q4. Because of their genetic makeup, cats are unable to taste what kind of flavor? Salty, umami, or sweet? While cats have a lot in common with us humans, both species enjoy sleeping, scratching, and destroying mice. We're different in one key aspect. Cats can't taste the sweet stuff. So don't go buying no donuts for your feline friends, okay? 421,013. I can hear you purring with satisfaction. You're coming to Q5 with me right now. 165,000 are gone, but maybe those levels are keeping you in. Q5, wear on a man's suit, which you typically find a boutonniere, collar, lapel, or waist. Perhaps you're at a black tie occasion right now. Maybe you successfully crashed your cousin's wedding. You weren't invited because they know how you are around an open bar. Regardless, you see the flower on that groom's lapel? Yeah. That's Das Boot. The boutonniere. Just, just a little flower on the lapel. That's all this. 454,000. 614 got that flower power. Leveling up with me to Q6 right now. Normally the halfway point, not tonight's extended 15 question game. That's how we do it on Sundays. Q6, what is Apple Inc.'s newest headquarters known as? Apple Park, Apple Stem, or Apple Core? It's opened a couple years ago in Cupertino. This immense ring shaped complex takes up more space than the Pentagon. Major missed opportunity to give it a clever name like the Orchard or the Core or HQ Pertino, perhaps. Instead, they call it Apple. Park. That's it. Nothing too special there. 262,000. Did not know that one. Uh oh. 293,509. You did. Not falling far from the quiz tonight. Again, I hope those levels are keeping you in here for Q7. Which of these is a real position at the CIA? Keeper of secrets, chief of disguise, or master of tricks? You ever watch spy movies where the characters put on wigs and makeup to aid their espionage? You know, like, like Mrs. Doubtfire? Well, it turns out. It's a totally real thing, as the CIA's chief of disguise could tell you. I mean, if you could locate them, they're in deep cover. 257,623. There's no disguising the fact that you know your facts. The rest of you, pop a cyanide capsule, chew on that. You're out of the game. But we, we got top security clearance for Q8. Which of these words does not form the acronym of Walt Disney World's Epcot Center? Experimental, community, or project? It's a small world. After all, Epcot was Walt's vision for a utopian future society, which morphed into a theme park, opened in 1982. But Disney aficionados will tell you it was originally conceived as the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Project is not, not a part of that. My projects, 178,754. You're working on a project, winning HQ tonight. You're taking the monorail, monorail with me to Q9. Which of these planets is the least spherical in shape? Earth, Saturn, or Mercury? Least spherical, you know, giant lumps of rock in space tend to seek a round shape as gravity pulls them inward. There are a couple ways to avoid this fate. You can be so small that gravity is minimal, or you're spinning so fast that your equator bulges way out, which is what's happening with Saturn. It's more of an oblate shape. Saturn over there. Ring around Parker Posey, 132,787. Throwing rings around Q10, lassoing that up, baby. You're doing so good tonight. You're so close. Q10. MTV at one time employed two hosts with what name? Julie Brown, Mark Goodman, or Chris Booker. Do coincidences mean anything, or are they just inevitable in a world where things keep happening? Ah, that was a deep philosophical question. Americans asked themselves in the late 80s and early 90s when watching MTV. It could bring you either miss or downtown Julie Brown. It was downtown Julie Brown first you saw there, and then Miss Julie Brown. 109,133, Rolo Tony Brown Town. We're going downtown, baby. Your street in the Range Rover. Hey, 
Uh, after the season finale game of trivia, it's a big one tonight. We got a big game of words with Anna Royce at 9.30, $10,000 prize. Keep your eyes on that prize, words at 10.30. But we got a few more questions. There's five questions left here. If you got to level 10, congratulations. You could have gotten all those wrong, and you're still in this thing. If you have an extra life, you can still use it here at Q11. American Sign Language, the letter Y, looks like a widely used gesture, meaning what? Namaste, peace, or shaka. Whether you're spelling out an adverb for a hearing impaired friend or visually conveying the aloha spirit to your surfer, dude, bros, you can't beat the extended thumb and pinky. That means Y and hang loose. The shaka sign. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, let me rock you, Shaka Khan. 58,730 hanging so loose right now. You're doing so well, riding those waves, surfing on to Q12, not the final question tonight. Which of these Shakespearean characters was introduced most recently? King Lear, Hamlet, or Romeo? Q12 or not Q12? That is the question we're on. And we're getting lit, late in the game here with some literature, classic literature. Romeo and Juliet first appeared in 1595. They're not looking too good these days. And Hamlet, around 1600, but King Lear, took the throne on the London Times best-selling list in 1605, most recently, 41,261. The rest of you are bending the knee to all of you. You are kings of the quiz so far. You got three questions left from that $125,000 prize. Q13, the first full album awarded gold certification, featured a song about which of these things? None, carriage, or a hotel. You gotta sell 500,000 records to go gold, and the first album to do so was the Oklahoma soundtrack, certified in 1958, featuring the song Surrey with the fringe on top. I know you're thinking, what the hell is a Surrey? Well, it was a popular doorless four wheeled carriage of the late 19th, early 20th century. We cannot take you out in the Surrey with the fringe on top. Oh, that fringe on top. Who's got those fringe benefits here at Q13? Ooh -wee. Do we have here our first savage question of the evening? Yeehaw! I do believe we do, folks. Losing over 31,000, 13,560. Oh, what a beautiful evening. Yeah, it is for you. Remember, if you're out right now, you could get that extra life still. There are two questions left. That extra life could keep you in this at Q14 and then 15 to win it. You can't use it on Q15. You can only use it right here, right now. Your last chance to dance. Last chance in 